Okay, so this video is all about how to increase the power of our scorecard with leading indicators. And getting the leading indicators into our scorecards, it's actually pretty challenging. But once we get it, it is immensely powerful. So let's talk about what we're talking about here. So EOS, we have a very structured scorecard. We wanna know the five to 15 measurables that determine the success or failure of my department or company. We wanna know for every one of these measurables what the goal is. We wanna know exactly who is responsible for each one of these measurables. And we wanna be able to see all 13 weeks in a single view. I wanna see if we're basically trending the right direction. I wanna see if I have an anomaly that we gotta we got to pay some attention to. So this is, the, this is the EOS scorecard basics that we're looking at here. Now, when we got a great scorecard, we get a few benefits, we get clarity. The most important things really start clear. This is the most important things for our department or our business. And so we have clarity. These are the things that matter the most. We have data. We don't have to spend lots of time talking about what I think happened. We get to look at it with numbers and it allows us to be able to get right to it very quickly. And it drives accountability because every one of these, these measurables has an owner. We know who is responsible for what, which allows us to drive that accountability across the organization. But as we have that, we wanna now start to build this concept of an early warning system. So when I take a look at my scorecard, I wanna be able to have a better sense of what's coming, not just how we did. We wanna see potential problems before they become actual problems. And so the way that we do this is this concept of leading indicators versus lagging indicators. So <clears throat> let's start with a lagging indicator. If I take a look at my last week's revenue, how much revenue did we get last week or profit or how many units did we ship last week? It doesn't give me any opportunity to fix things. We shipped a million dollars in product last week. Great. We wanted to ship two, $2 million. Oh, that's too bad. Shoot. I wish we did better. Nothing we can do. There's no ability to react. We basically take a look at what the results were and we go, okay, good or bad. Leading indicators are a little bit different. They're going to basically tell us the result and we're going to say, gosh, okay, this is coming in short. We still have time to react to it. We need to do something before the end results are worse. And so I'll, I'll use an example here. When we take a look at a leading indicator, maybe we want to see 50 closed deals in March. And my lagging indicator would be at the end of March. I say, how many closed deals did we have? Great. We had 50. We had 40. We had 60. It's a lagging indicator. There's nothing I can do at the end of March because that is already over. Now, when I start to move to a leading indicator, I'm starting to pay attention to some of my dependencies. So 50 closed deals in March means I need about 100 inbound leads in February. And so my leading indicator is my number of inbound leads. If I basically started to pay attention to those inbound leads, if I got 100 in February, then I'm going to feel pretty confident I'm going to get my 50 closed deals in March. If the inbound leads in February were only like 70, then I know in March I'm going to have a closed deal problem because I didn't get enough lead flow early on. I got to figure out what I'm going to do to be able to close that gap that I might be experiencing. And if I know that I got 150 leads in February, then I know that March is going to be a very healthy uh, month for us. And we may actually have to affect our capacity to be able to go live up to that demand. So when we start to pay attention more towards those in earlier indicators that allow us to know what our results are going to be farther ahead, that's what we're talking about with leading indicators. Now, we can allow this to start to get complex because we're starting to build a little bit of a funnel here. So if I got my lagging indicator revenue closed, I may actually start to take a look at my leading indicator. So one week ahead of time, when before we get a deal, we tend to get a verbal. So if I pay attention to my verbals received, it gives me about one week's notice before, my, before I actually see my lagging indicator of revenue closed. Maybe before the verbal, we can take a look at how many proposals are submitted. And so by paying attention to that three weeks ahead of time, I know that if I have a certain number of proposals, it's gonna drive a certain number of verbals, which is gonna drive a certain amount of closed revenue. Okay, so maybe we pay attention more to the proposals. And if I go a little farther back, maybe it's the number of first meeting sales pitches we have, because we know that if we have this many sales pitches, it's gonna to lead to this many proposals, which is gonna to lead to this many verbals, which is gonna to lead to that much revenue 
closing. And if I want to go even farther back, I could even just pay attention to the number of inbound leads because if I get this many inbound leads, it's going to lead to this many first meetings, which is going to lead to this many proposals and so on. We don't need to put the entire funnel in there. That's just going to add a lot of complexity and, and it's going to muddy the waters rather than add clarity to it. So what we might do is just put one or two funnel items. Okay, we want to see the revenue closed and we want to see the number of inbound leads. So it's going to give me eight weeks indicator of whether we're going to have a problem later on and we can start to figure out what we want to do here. So the department, the sales department may pay attention to the entire funnel, but for the overall scorecard, we don't need the entire funnel. We just need kind of just a couple of indicators. And this is what we do to maintain some of the simplicity of what we're looking for. Simple is certainly beautiful. So when we're doing this, we're going to start with our scorecard. We want our measurables, our goals, our owners, the standard scorecard. We're going to try to reduce that scorecard so we get to our five to 15 measurables that really truly show the pulse of my department. Once I do that, once I get it nice and kind of slim, that's where I'm going to say, okay, I want to start to get some leading indicators to enable some of that early warning function that I want. And then if I start to mix my leading and lagging indicators together with hopefully more leading than lagging, now I've got my early warning system and my clarity is giving me the pulse of how my department's doing. That's what we're looking for. What we ultimately want to get to is a scorecard that we have to look at all the time because we love it, we trust it, and we know that that really is telling us what's going on in our department. That's what we got to get to. We got to be relentless in our journey. So hope this all makes sense to you. If you have any questions, feel free to, to shoot me an email, rick at outpaceenterprises.com. I will answer all questions that come my way. Appreciate it, everybody. Thank you.